Hi, I'm Anna from Alice Caroline. We're a Liberty Fabric specialist and we are we have a lovely studio in the Cotswolds and we're surrounded by gorgeous Liberty Fabric, actually over 700 prints, so it's quite a nice place to be. Um, we've Really excitingly, we've got a, a new quilt to show you today and we're doing it in a kind of a subscription way. And we've got three blocks here to show you and it's, it's called the Liberty Snowflakes quilt and I've got Alice here although you can't see her, she's in the background, to tell you how the inspiration behind designing the quilt. I love um, snowflakes and the fact they're all completely individual. Um, no two snowflakes are the same. And so I designed the quilt around a six point star, which snowflakes are. Um, so no two blocks are the same and we don't, we don't use the same fabric twice either. So there's um, all different fabrics and all different shapes. And so it's made using all Tarn Alorn fabric. So, for example, in this block, we've got one, two, three, four, five different Liberty Tarn Alorn prints. And then this is also, the background fabric is also uh, a beautiful white on white Loddon fabric, it's called. And it was inspired by the arts and crafts movement and designed originally by William Morris, wasn't it, Alice? Yeah. And so this is one of our Alice Caroline exclusives, as is the centre star. So uh, that's one of our things that we love doing at Alice Caroline, our sort of taking Liberty prints and recolouring them and, um, into our own exclusive colourways. So that's also very exciting that we have in the, in the quilt. So the whole quilt is nine blocks and to, available today are three blocks, the first three. <clears throat> so they're called June, Movi and Rachel. And then the next three blocks in the middle will be available uh, from the 1st of August at 3 p.m. And then the, lo the bottom three blocks will be available on the 20th of September. And on the 20th of September, we'll also have a finishing pack to be able to, to, to quilt your, to finish your quilt basically, and to fit it all together. You could also use it as a, a cushion cover if it's a bit too big of a project for you, or you just fancy having a go at English paper piecing, then you could just buy one block and turn it into a wall hanging or a cushion cover. Um, I mean, they're all very beautiful and stand alone in their own right. So um, yes, just do buy whatever you, whatever you fancy really. So, I thought today I'd go through a bit of sort of the history of English paper piecing while I'm doing the demo. Um, I'll come on to that in, in, in a little while and give you some really super top tips for English paper piecing as well. So English paper piecing basically is where you wrap paper with fabric. So for example, here's a hexagon. Now all of the um, all of the paper pieces are pre-cut so you get them all in your in your kit like this. So there's no cutting involved and you get the fabric. You have to cut out the fabric um, and I've pre-cut some here and then you baste it. Now our preferred method of basting is using a, a, a glue pen. This is a sew line one. We've cut out the, the um, fabric with a quarter inch seam allowance and then that allows you to glue along the paper and fold the fabric over it. It seems a very strange thing wrapping uh, paper in fabric, but what you do is you um, you then sew the pieces together. Once you have sewn all along every single side of the, the paper piece and fabric, you then take the paper out. Now historically, so English paper piecing sort of dates back to the 1770s, I think was the first English paper piece quilt in England. So you can see that's it's a very quick and easy method of um, basting. I'll just do a, a diamond here. Again, you glue the paper, not the fabric. And so it was first, first sort of came, um, came known in the sort of the 1770s and then became very, very popular in sort of the 1880s. But paper was a really, really valuable commodity back then. So it was sort of a, a thing that only the sort of wealthier people did. And as you can see, we're just preparing all of our paper pieces. Uh, so yes, and also because paper was so valuable, it was it was they were sort of reused. So for example, old newspapers or magazines were used for English paper piecing. You wouldn't have had them pre-cut then. You'd have had to have cut them all out yourself. 
I have to draw the draw the, the shapes and cut them all out. So as you can see, that's a really, really quick method of basting. Another method of basting is by using a thread. So it's called thread basting. And you are putting rough stitches in at the same time as wrapping. You're just folding the fabric over the paper and putting stitches probably about one centimetre. You sew through the paper and the fabric and you don't need to worry about that because that will those stitches will be um, coming out once you've finished your quilt. Lots of people do still prefer to thread baste. As you can see, we just need to tuck the corner of that one under before we secure the stitching at the end. Try and go through all the layers. So it doesn't have to be neat. As you can see, I'm not doing neat sewing here. And then that's your, that's your piece thread basted. Gives the same effect. It's just, I think it takes a little bit longer to thread baste. So I thought we would show you then stitching together. Um, so this is one I started earlier. So this is the center of the June block. So this is the center of this block here. And all you're doing is you are using your paper pieces, paper and fabric pieces that you have prepared. And you are sewing the right sides together. So you get your two pieces, fold them using the right sides together, try and get them as perfectly matched as you can. And then we use a whip stitch along the edge. Now I thought in this demo, Try not to lose our end. You can, a, a really good top tip is you tie a knot at the top here to anchor the thread to the needle um, and then you don't lose your, your, it doesn't come unthreaded. So I thought we'd give you some really super top tips in this, in this demo uh, because various things can make English paper piecing a lot easier. So as you can see, it puts quite a lot of pressure on that middle finger. So you can use something like a leather thimble or a metal thimble, whichever you sort of prefer that fits your finger. I mean, this one really does fit the finger very nicely and that can take the pressure off that middle section. When I was doing a lot of English paper piecing uh, recently, because I was making one of our lovely quilts here at Alice Caroline, I, <laughs> I went through, went right through my middle finger and it was, it, it became quite painful. So a thimble is quite a good top tip. You can see from the needle I'm using, very, only just see, but it's a gold tipped needle. And this helps it to glide through the fabric more easily. And this is a size nine. Now it's a sharp and it, as you can see, it literally glides through the fabric. And you're trying to sew without catching the paper. <clears throat> but if you do catch the paper, it doesn't really matter because it will come out eventually and it, you, you can still reuse the paper pieces. So we're just, <clears throat> excuse me, whip stitching along the edge. We're trying to get about 10 stitches per inch. It gives you a good guidance. But the closer you stitch together, the more strong your finished product will be and you're going right to the middle and then we'll get our next piece and sew our next piece in and we can sew from the middle back out Alice can you think of any other top tips that we that we could give What other things are make it really easy? So the thread, that's a, that's a good one. What thread would you use for English paper piecing? Um, the Aurifil, we are a fan of Aurifil thread and we use a 50 weight. Um, some What's people this? like the 80 weight, which is a very fine thread, um, but it can tend to break. Um, you could also use thread conditioner on um, thread to help it glide through more easily. 
and the way that you would use that <clears throat> would be you would just put a little bit of thread conditioner on your thread and it also stops it from twisting doesn't it and um and knotting which is which can happen quite frequently yeah in and English paper once pacing. you've threaded the needle if you let the twist come out of the thread um before you start sewing that can help so i find this so therapeutic it's very transportable it's really fun totally addictive and if we're ever allowed to go back on holiday <laughs> we will uh, it's really it's really great to take with you um i take mine in a little pouch this is my little pouch that i take all my english paper piecing around in all you really need is a tiny little pair of scissors your i i would always prep my pieces at home before before i go out and about because it's just it, it's much more easy to sort of take it out and about it, it um, if it's already pre-prepped and then you can sort of just sit on the beach read a book sit by the pool um, and sit wherever and 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 happily hand sew so there you go you can see it's fairly quick it's a fairly quick process to uh to be building um, and this the way that these are, are built is from the sort of circle you, you do the center star first or the center hexagon first and then do the next sort of pieces that are, are surrounding that and then you sort of move in an outward direction to build to build the um to build the piece and then this is then appliqued onto the backing of the lodden fabric that we were talking about earlier so yeah i hope those top tips are really useful and um I, all of the kits are available on the website so do go and take a look